So we're all doing a little bit of networking right now. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to find a seat. And we're going to go through the stages of networking because after this, we're going to go into career speed dating. And I think it might be useful to have some of these tips. So starting off, um, actually, you, know, you can just, they can keep the, uh, the bingo thing and keep your pen, too. Now, oh, I forgot I have the power. Hold on. Where is this thing? I was like, I was about to say next slide, but I forgot I have this. Oh, too much. OK. Now, I want everybody to use a paper and write down, well, I'll give you like 45, 45, 50 seconds. What is networking in your own opinion slash words? I'll give you like 15 more seconds, and then I'm a uh, review. OK. OK, who is bold enough to want to um, say out loud, oh, this actually, Sorry, uh, Aaron, can I get the throwing mic? I didn't think about it. We might need to use it right now. OK, I see one right here. <laughs> so networking is um, building a relationship or a connection with somebody with, the, with a common interest or a profession. Mm, very well, very true. I like that. Who else has a, and by the way, there's no, you can throw it to me first. Oh. I'm about to throw it to you. Ready? Three, two, ah. Networking is establishing a relationship with other people so that when an opportunity presents, you can take advantage of it or allow someone to take advantage of you in a positive manner. I like that. Yes, I think that's a great summation of it. I'm going to put the textbook definitions, but honestly, I like y'all definitions a little better. The textbook definition is the action of interacting with others to exchange information or develop a professional or social contact. Now, it's a little what of the same question, but what do you think the purpose of networking is? We're also going to write it down on paper. Or actually, can you pass me that? Who wants, uh, who wants to give it a stab? You? Yeah. Yeah. Like not. <laughs> All right. Um, purpose of networking, in my opinion, is to increase your opportunities or reach within a specific domain. Um, so if you're trying to get a job, networking helps you um, re get in touch with people who might be able to help you or give you advice in order to get that job or opportunity. Good throw. Any other people want to take a stab? All right. So I agree. But down to the core of it, I think it's to create genuine, lasting relationships with people. Um, so there is, in my opinion, four stages to networking that we're going to get into. And the first stage I want to talk about is the why. So. The key is to always approach with intent. There's usually two situations where you're going to be in. There's going to be one situation where you want to um, market yourself and talk to the other person. And there's going to be other situations in where you want to find out more about the other person. So, but before you ever approach, or this is like if you're going to a conference, if you're going to something like this, if you're going to a networking event, Baskin Robbins, always think about 
what is my goal with networking with this person? Um, and always reflect to see if your intentions are genuine. Um, I'm going to elaborate on the third point, but you do not want to solely talk to somebody because of what you'll gain from them, because it will show throughout your interactions. Um, not to say that like networking should be like a mutually beneficial experience in building a relationship and getting to know somebody, right? But there is ways where you can kind of like work against yourself in ways, and we'll get into that later. So. Stage two is the approach slash first impression, right? So I'm going to give you guys some tips for the approaching somebody or sparking conversation. One thing I didn't put it here, but it's something that I, it's, I use a lot is, um, one, not everybody's extroverted, right? So if you feel like you're one of the introverted people, one thing you can do is you can latch on to your extroverted friend and have them go out into a crowd. And then by extension, they bring you into it. So it's a little less daunting for yourself. Um, another thing I say is to, I lost my train of thought. Another thing I say is one, be aware of what your setting is. So networking, if you're at like somebody's party versus being at a summit or a conference is a lot different. So that will dictate the type of conversations that you'll have. Um, two is we can spark conversation off of observation. So highlight something interesting. Um, say like, oh, like if you notice, like they have some type of shirt and you're familiar with the shirt, talk about that. Or you can just say, hey, oh, yes. Another thing I, I forgot to add is that let's say you're walking to a room. You don't have the extra person. You're a little late to the party. Everybody else has their circles. Everybody has their circles. You're just there by yourself. You're like, where, where do I go to? One thing I always use that goes without fail is that it, it's a little daunting, but like most people are not as scared as you think. I walk up to the circle and I say, hey, I just got here. I don't know anybody. Do you mind if I can join your circle? And like 9.5 times out of 10, people are like, oh, yeah, sure. What's your name? How can I, like, how do I meet you? So that's a great way to like break down barriers and just like making yourself known that you're here and that you want to interact. Um, another way you can spark conversation is spark based off of a compliment. Um, make sure they're genuine though, and don't just like be like nice shirt and it's like, you know, it's not a nice shirt. Like if you truly <laughs> actually like what they have on, um, then like spark based off a compliment. Um, based on work. So if you guys are like, what do you do? Or you have some type of interest in their field, people really like talking about themselves and what they do and what they're passionate about. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, and tell a joke. But if you're not funny, don't force it. It's, um, it's meant for a certain people. But there's something light. And again, be aware of what setting you're in. That's why I start with that. Be aware of what setting you in. You can spark a joke and you know, make it a little light. And last, say something that they may relate to. Like even though it's kind of cliche, like people talking about the weather, people like to talk about the weather. So if it's cold outside and you're like, man, it's cold outside, people are like, yeah, I know, right? Boom, friends. So, um, and last, well, there's two more. Be warm and inviting. Um, when you're talking to people, like it can be daunting at times, but just like put yourself out there, and it's hard, but you have to be vulnerable, and in that. They see that, and they're more drawn to you because of it. And last, smile. So I have my notifications on, so I'm going to whip my phone out and turn it off. There we go. And smile. OK. So we're going to do a drill. Everybody get in pairs. Um, you don't have to stand up, but get a little closer to wherever your pair is. If you have an odd number of people, try to find an even. If not, then y'all be in the three. OK, so when I say go, you guys are going to make eye contact for 15 seconds. Three, two, one, go. And you can blink. <laughs> it's not a non-blinking game. <laughs> Three. 
two, one. Okay, stop. Um, anybody, can you, anybody wants to talk? How did that weird, how was that interaction for you just now? Anybody? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Yo, it made me nervous. Sorry, and our team. Uh, mad nervous, so. Nervous, why? Uh, not talking, just staring in somebody's eyes. Yeah. Windows of their soul. Yeah. <laughs> it's nerve wracking, so. Awesome, anybody else, one more person? You can do it directly. Yeah, it was a bit awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, one, it's awkward because I didn't tell you guys to say anything, so that was the awkward part. But also, at least for me, sometimes when I look into people's like eyes, you're just looking, like you said, the windows of their soul. You're like, wow, this is intense. Like, I, it, you're supposed to keep eye contact during a conversation, but like, it's just so weird sometimes, right? So, I've got it down to a science. This is my good friend Obama. We call it the gaze tea. Um, and pretty much like you have the illusion of having eye contact, but you're not actually directly staring into their soul. So pretty much this is the T right here. We have the actual eyes, we got the nose, we got the mouth. So what most people do is they look directly into the eyes and they're like, man, this is, this is some intense stuff. But what you really want to do is look in between the eyes and focus there. That makes it less intense, less awkward, and you're able to um, like maintain eye contact for a longer time. Then there's also the mouth. Um, if you look at the mouth, it still appears as if you're looking at, straight at them in the eyes. So usually, oh, yeah, these are two. So usually when maintaining eye contact, if you're looking in between the eyes too long, you're like, this is weird, then you can stare at their mouth. Sometimes you can even go to the nose. Um, but it still looks like you're looking directly at them. And it's not like you're like looking at them like this. It's kind of like, oh, this feels natural. And every so often, like, if you make hand gestures, you can like move, look at your hands, look back at them. It's still engaging. You're still keeping eye contact with who you want to talk to. So we're going to try this exercise again. But this time, we're going to try using the gay tea, gaze T concept. So go with your partner, who you had the first time, and in three seconds, you're gonna get, maintain eye contact. Three, two, one, 15. Three, two, one. Okay. Anybody? Anybody want to talk about if they felt any difference between first and second? Oh. I can't catch, but it felt better looking at somebody's nose and like their mouth than looking at their eyes. Can you tell that they were not looking directly in your eyes? Could you tell? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Good. So um, eye contact is important because shifty eyes sometimes can make you seem like suspicious. You're just like looking around is like you're trying to <laughs> find an exit, right? So be sure to focus on the gaze T. And when you're talking, now we're going to focus on the other person. And we're going to get more into that. So your goal is to make them feel comfortable sharing themselves with you. So how do you make people feel comfortable sharing? So one is like something you got to give to get. So you're going to have to share something about yourself in order to hear something back. Um, and you don't have to TMI it, but like if it's something as simple as like, you know, oh, like I'm a little scared right now. And then they're like, oh, like I'm scared too. And then boom, you guys are more likely to, you know, um, start gelling. Um, but especially in the first like interaction, your goal is to get them to share. So do not try not to take over the conversation. Definitely don't let them carry the conversation on their backs, but um, make an effort to get them involved a lot to be able to share about themselves in the conversation so it's an even exchange. And there's a method for this I called the POP method. So what is the POP method? Um, one, ask a specific and relevant 
question. Um, so if you ask a very open-ended question like, how was your day, you're going to get good, right? <laughs> but sometimes, like, if I'm hosting like, a meeting, I ask, what are two highs and lows from your week? Now they actually have to think, dang, how did my week go? What was one thing that went good? What was one thing that went bad? And now I'm like, oh, like, you missed the bus? Oh, man, where were you going to? Boom, now you guys can start going. So like, the more specific and relevant the question, the better it is for the conversation. Broad questions get short answers. Be an active listener. So just like the, if somebody just said like they missed the bus, right? You need to pay attention to be able to uh, pinpoint that and then expound on it in the response. So those don't ask questions or just don't think about what you're going to say. Think about what they're saying and then try to build off of that. Three, relate to common interests only when it advances the conversation. There's, I know you've probably met people like this, like, oh, me too, and oh, me too, and everything you say, me too. And it's like, that's great that you also know this too, but also, like, let me cook. Like, I'm still talking, like, you know? <laughs> so when it advances the conversation, yes, you can insert yourself and then do it. But if you're just relating just to relate and you have nowhere to do it other than me too, then it's not to the betterment of the interaction. Four. OK, so it goes into being an active listener. So like, by being more specific about it. So referencing things that they're saying, giving your opinion on things that they said, laughing at a joke they made, et cetera, making, it, like, making them know, like, OK, like, I'm being heard right now. That's what people really want to know. Know that they're being listened to. Because sometimes, like, you ever been talking in a group setting, and you're like, wow, nobody's listening to me. Let me just quietly stop talking. And like, wow, nobody knows I stopped talking. That's crazy. So definitely, like, Make sure they know that, OK, somebody has, I have somebody's attention, um, and they care about what I'm saying. Five, share a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm not going to respond too much, because I feel like I touched on that a lot already. But you have to give to get, so share about yourself in order to hear about themselves as well. Um, and six, pick up on social cues. Sometimes it's not you. Sometimes people are just having a bad day. Sometimes people are burnt out. Maybe they talked to 60 people before you, and they're like, wow, 61? This is beyond my limit, right? So sometimes, like, you need to be able to pick up on social cues like they're giving short responses. Maybe they have their feet like, pointed out. That means, OK, like, they are not ready for like, an interaction. Let me keep this brief and short. Of course, I had the caveat. It's kind of a balance, right? Because sometimes you can be in your own head about it and overthink, and then stop an interaction early because you're like, oh, they don't really want to talk to me. But really, it might have like, overthought what the thing was. I would just say like, it's a very um, thing. It's not a black and white thing. It's something you have to get the hang of over time and be able to read people. Um, but social cues to pick up on are very important. And it's not only for people who are not ready for conversation. Sometimes you can pick up social cues or like, oh, this is a topic they're really excited to talk about. Like, Let me keep talking about this. So. That goes into adapting. So always be able to adapt to whatever the situation or conversation needs to. Don't feel the need to structure the conversation. Oh, we were talking about this, so we need to keep talking about this. Conversation threads, especially like, you know, y'all be talking to your friends, and you, you talk about one thing, and you end up talking about this thing. You didn't even finish the other point. Y'all talking about this thing over here, and it just keeps going. But that's how a conversation is supposed to be. Don't try to make it overstructured. Adapt to the conversation and flow with the other person as you bounce off each other. Rinse and repeats. OK, any questions before I continue on? Yes. Honestly, I, I heard you, but I just want to throw it. Why is it called the pop method? Why is it called the pop method? Mm. So people have an invisible bubble around themselves, right? So in order to pop that bubble, um, you need to, one, get them talking about themselves and understand what their passions are. So you're just kind of like slowly chipping away at the bubble, um, which is why I call it the pop questions. Because if you ask the right questions, then you're going to be able to find the breach and bring the barrier down. Y'all saw the one hand? OK. So stage three, 
ending conversation. So great job. Let's say you got them to open up. You guys had a great interaction. But now it's time, like, OK, like I need to move on, or they got to move on. How do we properly end this conversation? One, let them get to the last point. Don't really cut them off unless they're really like dragging it out. And two, get their content information, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, phone number, X, Twitter, whatever. Um, and if need be, schedule up a follow-up meeting. So this is like this is not just for professional networking, by the way. This is for life. Anywhere you meet somebody at a party, or you meet a new friend on the street. Schedule a follow-up meeting. Oh, we should get lunch sometime. Oh, like let's like go hang out. Oh, let's go for a coffee, right? Um, so having that follow-up meeting is really important because like after the first interaction, a lot of people times you, unless you guys have some type of vivid memory or it might be forgotten about. So if it's somebody you have a true connection with and you really want to know more, it's really important to have that next meeting follow-up. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a person. It can be virtual. It can just be like email, or you guys can talk about whatever you guys were both passionate about. But having that follow-up is very important. OK, so let's do some practicing. So pair up with a new partner, not the same one who you looked in their eyes. Um, each pair will be given a hypothetical scenario, and you will act as if you're meeting each other just for the first time. Or you might be meeting for the, for the first time, so this might be easier for you. You don't have to act it. All right, get into pairs. New pairs. You can move around the room if need be. OK. So this, this side of the room, you guys are ones. This side of the room, you guys are twos. And that side of the room, you guys are threes. Between your partner, you can decide who's A or B. Um, and then you'll see the why, because we, we always want to start with intent. So you guys determine who's person A, who's person B, and you know your possible why. And this is 100% improv. So you guys are just pretending to be in this scenario. We're going to give this five minutes, and then we're going to reconvene. Sound good? Oh, sorry. You guys can switch back and forth. So maybe give it like one minute or two minutes. Uh, this person A, and then you got switch. Now he's person A or she's person B. So yeah. Okay, wrap it up. We about we got a couple of seconds left. And see. Quiet on the set. OK. Um, no, um, not required, but if anybody wants to share what you guys talked about in your improv, go ahead. Anybody? Who? OK, you guys are kind of far. <laughs> um, so it was a wash. A Washamatic 2000. So, <laughs> what he was selling to me, uh, his business, is pretty much to sum it up um, a house cleaner literally can clean anything but in the palm of your hand. Um, there's, you can Bluetooth it and it's able to clean anything from dishwasher, top of the ceiling, vacuum, pretty much anything in the house. But again, the beauty of it is, is in the palm of your hands. So, that's the. Uh, it's really techy, of course. So yeah. OK, I it. like that. So it was kind of like, so they were a custom, cons customer in Janet there, and he was trying to sell them something. So that's like, these, I chose these interactions on purpose, because these are all different kind of things. You guys had to sell yourselves. You guys had to create a new friend. And you guys had to understand your team dynamics. Anybody from team dynamics section? Um, it was me at AV 
first he was the manager and I was the new hire. Oh. No, no, sneak into the mic. Oh. It's a, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, I was the manager and then he was the new hire. What you want me you to do? Yeah, speak in. Flip it, flip it. Oh, has a mic on yeah, it. There you go. I did not know that. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, I was AB's manager, and guess what the first thing, one of the first questions he asked me, how did he get a raise? (laughs) He all about the money. Okay, but yeah, no, it was a pretty good activity. Do you have any comments? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right, cool. Oh, go ahead. Toss it. Just lucky for Catherine. Um, I spoke with Miss, uh, may I get your name again? I'm sorry. Oh, now? And we talked about basically, um, she was the manager and I was the um, new hire. Um, she asked me how did it feel like joining the company and everything. Um, we talked about Korean barbecue. And then she told me, <laughs> she told me a little bit about her backstory in college, how she was a part of different clubs and organizations, um, one of them being women in tech. And it was a really good conversation. Thing to highlight here is that she actually said she does not have a woman in tech club at her school, which yeah. I said, why don't you start one? And yes, yes, he did. and I was thinking about doing that. Yeah. So, yes. What you? I do one more. I want to get one from the other section, if y'all don't mind. We got one from the other section. <laughs> Go on. So basically what we talked about was she takes like AP class and AP computer classes. So she was just telling me how interested she was in the languages that she's doing in it. That was basically that. Awesome. Love that. So I'm hoping you guys were able to practice some of these methods. And we're going to go through the last part. So before, let's recap. Um, Anybody remember what is stage one of networking? Anybody can just put it out, out loud. The why. Good job. What is stage two of networking? The what? First impression. You're close. Um, oh, I forgot. We have stickers. I was supposed to give these out. I'll do that later. OK. What is stage three? Conversation. And now. We have one more stage to talk about, following up. So the stages of networks are not linear. If you've noticed here, there's only one direct arrow from stage one to stage two, but stage three and four is kind of out there, right? (laughs) Um, Creating lasting relationships with people takes work, takes time, takes dedication. It doesn't take one interaction. It takes multiple interactions. It takes following up. It takes care and compassion. So make sure that, again, it goes back to the why. If you decide that you want to build a genuine and long-lasting relationship with somebody, that means you have to keep following up with them. So what can this look like? Um, so one, it can go like LinkedIn, right? If you meet somebody who you aspire um, to be like, let's say you meet somebody in their dream career, et cetera, et cetera, right? You can follow them on LinkedIn, but it's not just like following them on LinkedIn, like see what they post, interact with their posts, interact with their accomplishments, like their posts, right? So they're, you're kind of like within like their bubble of sorts. Um, and also, just because you had a lengthy interaction with somebody at first, doesn't necessarily mean that you know them. So every conversation, like, you always, even people we've been friends with for years, you, um, there's probably things that you're like, wow, that's something new I just learned about you. So always be on the hunt to learn something new about the people you interact with, and always try your best to be supporting others that you interact with. Um, but in the next interaction, I have focused heavily on like you trying to get to know them. So then in the next interaction, try to show a little bit about who you are So now we're getting more specifics about following up. Sometimes you won't be able to schedule it face-to-face, especially if it's somebody busy. Um, That's not possible. But again, social media is a very useful tool. And again, it goes down to interacting, supporting, swiping up, commenting, um, liking. Um, But following up, the last thing you want to do is be an annoyance. How can you do that? So sometimes, like I've gotten this a couple of times, is like, you respond on LinkedIn, and sometimes you don't get on your, you get on your feelings, somebody doesn't respond back, oh, they don't like me, they don't respond back. 
most of the times the person is just busy. Um, so like, give it like maybe a couple weeks or so, and then follow back up. Don't take it to heart. But what you don't want to do is kind of like spam somebody, or you don't want to like make it feel like you're entitled. You're entitled to their response because that's why you get bad um, reactions. So you just put yourself out there, for better or for worse. See what happens. Let it marinate for a little bit. Then return back to it. But definitely, like, don't give up after the first interaction. Definitely follow up because people it might just be lost in their inbox and like, oh, they, you followed up. Oh, I see it again. So I'm guessing like, what I'm trying to say, there's a balance of following up. You don't want to overdo it, but you need to do it, if that makes sense. So you need to find that tipping point in between. Um, but also, you don't only want to hit people up when you need something. Um, a lot of people don't mind. I definitely don't mind. Um, but not everybody's built like me, and some people don't like that too well. So here are some tips. Oh, I, I guess I wanted to highlight, do not solely, only solely talk about. So if you only talk to them because of what you need something, like if you're not there just to, to build a genuine relationship and connection with the person, it shows in how you interact with them. If you're just like, hey, I need 20 bucks. Or if you have a friend, that friend who always hits you up when they need something, they never hit you up for hangout, they never hit you up to say what's up, checking how you're doing, then you know, like, hmm, this friend, it seems like they don't really want to have a relationship with me. They want to have a relationship with what I can provide for them. So that carries into all your professional relationships as well. So one thing that I do is called the six week checkup. It's been super effective. So after your initial encounter, you get their content information and you spark the conversation right. Then you get them on the LinkedIn, you comment on their posts, you interact with it. But I, I put six weeks, but sometimes I do this kind of quarterly. I send out like a email to them or something like, hey, it's great interacting with you. How's everything been? And then like give them updates on my life. And that's actually been like really effective with maintaining. I still have relationships that are from like 2018 when I was an intern of people who I met in the office and I still talk to them because I checked in on them. There's been a certain t points in time where because I checked in on things, people kept me in mind for other opportunities. Because one, they knew what I was up to and doing currently in life. And two, I was just like, no other reason. Like, I was literally just checking in. There was actually one specific time where um, like one of my old professors um, helped me pay for a conference. Because I was just saying, hey, I'm going to this conference. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to go because it costs too much money. It was just a throwaway line. He was like, oh, really? How much is it? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I can cover it for you. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. So I'm not saying that you'll get things covered for you, but I'm saying just like maintain relationships and, and follow up. It's really, truly important. I think that's like the most important part of networking, not just meeting people, but maintaining the relationships. Yes. So that funny enough again since we are the black cs like talk um i was like one of three black students and there's only one black professor obviously him and i were locked in and i think my computer actually ended up breaking and i had to pay like a thousand dollar for it he was like i will ship you a computer it literally just ship me a computer so yeah shout out to and that's just like we just talk about like life talk every once in a while that's it Awesome. So I think I touched on these a lot while I was talking, but just to reiterate the points. One, make sure you're generally interested in them and what they're doing. And also like point out specific things. Like if somebody says they're moving to like a new city, ask them how the new city is, like, you know, make sure you're not just sending out a generic message to everybody. Make sure it's actually tailored to the person you're sending it to. Um, which also comes with attention, right? Because nobody has the capacity to maintain like a thousand relationships. So you actually, that's why the why is also important. What are your intentions? Who do you want to connect with? Why do you want to connect with them? Two, consistency. Um, like you don't have to talk to anybody every day. There's some people who I haven't talked to in like a year, but I catch up with them and it's like things never pick up. You just need to be able to understand what the relationship is and then keep up with it in the context of that relationship because everybody's different. Um, and then last, I keep emphasizing, don't avoid only hitting people up when they need something. Now, if worst comes to worst and they really do need something, like always shoot, make that cold, you know, cold email or that cold read, that's cool. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying that if you're in the position to not have to do that and you have the opportunity to follow up with them and build that genuine connection, always go for that first 
before doing that. Okay, so um, this is something I do after my internship. Um, I created like a doc or a spreadsheet on my personal account because you don't want to lose access to it afterwards. And I wrote down the email of everybody who I had a meaningful interaction with. And then I did the six week checkup or quarterly checkup. Quarterly is a little bit more sustainable for me, but six weeks for other people. Um, and with that, I was able to keep in contact. I'm so in contact with a lot of people from my internships and now throughout my professional career. So now we finally get to unlock the last stage, the follow-up. So this is the full picture. Stage one, the why. Stage two, the first impression. Stage three, conversation. Stage four, the most important stage, follow-up. And with all of that, we get to the objective of creating genuine and lasting relationships with people. So. Congratulations, we have a genuine relationship built. Now, you should feel comfortable talking to them and asking for favors if need be. But remember that networking is a mutually beneficial, so you also need to be ready to do people favors and provide value to your network. So if you remember nothing today, remember this. People who give back selflessly will make it farther in life than people who take everything for themselves selflessly. Always think about what you can do for other people in your network. Even if they didn't reach out to you and there's an opportunity that you know somebody you met, oh, they're interested in cybersecurity. And cybersecurity opportunity, I'm interested in this. Oh, but I met somebody who's interested in cybersecurity. Let me forward that to them. Always think about how you can provide value to other people and just give without expecting back and good things will follow you. So that is all. I do have some cash money for me. So who can name the three major concepts we covered, all three. Mm. Mm. Go for it, go for it. Um, what is networking? Why do we network? And how do we um, build connections? Yes. Um, that's, that's why, we'll see. Let's see who can get the most. But I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, I would say it's like the biggest, biggest, biggest key concept. Yes, there we go. That's one. Ooh, that's two. Okay, anybody can I'll do two? I guess not. We got a winner. The six week checkup was the last one. So here you got it. Come, come collect your, your buck. So remember the gaze T, eye contact. Pretend we had taken a picture. <laughs> Look into the fake camera. Yeah. Oh, you got us? OK. Awesome. Gaze T concept, remember, when you're to make eye contact less awkward, look between the eyes, look at the mouth, look at the nose. You can transition between the two. Every so often, if you use your hands, you're talking to look at your hands. But you don't have to look directly into their soul. Two, the pop method. Um, pop the bubble around people by trying to focus a conversation around their interests and passions, because people really like to talk about themselves. You just need to make them feel comfortable. And then last, a six week checkup, always making sure to follow up with connections that you make. So when you need to make an ask, the ask is a lot warmer. Any questions? We got five, four minutes for questions. If not, no questions? Oh, one question. What do you do when you're doing all of this and the person's still not responding? Eh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people in this world, like if one person is not responding, one, I would say don't take it personally. Like I don't think any, well definitely sometimes it happens, but I don't, most of the time it's not that they have a personal vendetta against you or anything like that. Sometimes they're honestly just overwhelmed and busy and they just can't get to you and that's fine. Like you just need to make peace of the fact that not every connection you make will end up turning into a genuine friendship or relationship. But it doesn't mean you can't, don't have to stop trying. So that's my answer. Any other questions? Oh, how long did it take you to get comfortable using the gaze T pop method and the six week follow up? Um, gaze T, 
I kind of instantly like was able to implement that because like I used to shift my eyes a lot. Like I could not make eye contact for the life of me. And I'm like, why? Like I have to look into somebody's soul. This is normal. This is what people in business do. Like so I was just like trying to think of like other ways I can like avoid eye contact. And one day I was like, I think I was looking in between somebody's eyes and I'm like, you know, can you tell I'm looking in between your eyes right now? They're like, no. And I was like, oh, light bulb. So yeah, and then I was just testing the limits. Like, if I look at your mouth, like, can you tell I'm looking at your mouth right now? They're like, nope. And I was like, perfect. So that was kind of easy. The six week checkup, it was also somewhat like comfortable to do. But I will say that um, there are certain points of time where it was more about like my bandwidth. So sometimes I got too busy to check in with people. And that happens sometimes. Don't feel bad about that. Um, does that answer your question? Kind of? Yes. Not really? If, I how would I? I like the pop method. Oh, the pop method. Oh, so that's the one that actually takes a decent amount of time and a lot of practice because like it's a lot of things to like there's a lot of different methods you can do to spark conversation and to get people to open up. My advice would be like don't focus in on trying to do everything. Maybe just focus in on like one or two things. So get really good at just like being comfortable approaching people and or get really comfortable with listening in and building off people's conversations. And then after you're good at, at one thing, then try to add in another thing to your game. If you try to do everything once, try to compliment, make a joke, all that, you're just gonna like, you're gonna try to check boxes, it's not gonna feel natural. So like, make it easy for yourself, focus in on one thing at a time, and then keep practicing, putting yourself in situations where you have to talk to people. Oh, oh no, that's the first drop I have today. I think that is, we're, good. we're all for time. If you have any more questions, you can find me later. Thank you, and we're about to transition into career speed dating, so sit tight. We're about to get our volunteers. If you're a volunteer for career speed dating, can you go to that corner over there, and we'll brief you quickly.